Hey guys, it's uh, <clears throat> June 9th, 2023, and I wanted to uh, just make a quick video on uh, on a eureka moment, which I tend to be having now more often than uh, I thought possible. But um, I've been thinking about what what causes a weekly level inefficiency, and ICT mentioned it, and it's so obvious when you actually put some thought to it. But, uh, you know, before before you start thinking in, in these terms, it's difficult to, to actually understand it. So every, all of the time, there are multiple contract delivery months on the futures product. So remember that a futures contract is, um, is an agreement to, uh, is, is an agreement to deliver a certain product at a f at a future date, right? So, what is actually happening on these weekly? I'll just get to the point. What's actually happening with these weekly inefficiencies is the price is lining up. Basically, it's synchronizing or coordinating the different contract delivery months. So, we're we're right about to roll over between the June contract and the September contract. So. A futures contract is is designed to deliver you a certain amount of something at a future date, right? Kind of like an options contract. But what I have on the the left is the the Dow futures or the YM weekly chart for the June delivery, so that's YMM. And then what we're rolling into now is the Dow futures for the uh, September. Now you can see that the back month or the September delivery month has already been trading. Uh, it's having what we call mark to markets, or uh, it's been offered as a product all the way back since September, right? So they offer these uh, contract delivery months well in advance. I think it's like a year and a half, something like that. So they they all of them are all trading at the same time. I mean, even the the next after September, I think it's December, or maybe it's October. I think it's I think it's December. But anyways, the next delivery month past September is also currently trading. So let me just get to the point. Look at how on the right, the September contract, this same area that's between February, right here, this gap. All right, so the right side is the September delivery contract month. The left side is the June contract month. Notice that the June contract month, that same time period, so that same 13th, February 13, that's this same area right here on our current contract, which is the June contract. It's a gap on the September contract. And what price is currently doing is it's, it's bringing the two contracts into synchrony, basically. That's what, so, that's what's happening with these longer time time frames uh, inefficiencies. Is if you go and look at your later contract delivery months, instead of seeing like thin trading, like you see all these Doji candles here on the June contract, you'll just see a gap, right, on the on the September contract. So that's what's really happening. And I thought I would just share that. Um, so in some ways. Right. First off, don't use the continuous contract. Why not use the continuous contract? Well, because you're not going to be able to see the gaps or the inefficiencies as easily. Um, but then you you want yeah you want to leave the inefficiencies basically on the chart. So we see that for example on the September contract, this same uh, March twenty uh, seventh March twenty three. Notice that on the June contract there was actually. There were prices happening there at that 733 on the YM. On the June contract, there was thin trading there, but on the September contract for that week, it just gapped up. Right. So, you know, maybe in the future, in a few months from now, we might want to come back down to this 741. And whenever our next contract delivery month comes in, well, maybe we want to synchronize this inefficiency. But, you know, remember that your gaps can, your unless it's a breakaway gap, Gaps can be revisited. What do I mean by that? Like order blocks, they can be re revisited twice, three, multiple times, right? Uh, they can act as support and resistance multiple times. So 
This gap here on the September contract is on the right. Price is coming back into it. And if you look on the September contract, it's a lot more clear what today's move on the Dow actually was. And what it was, was, let me see, my, if my 50 level. Yeah, that, that's it. That's what it was. Um, the impulse move there, we're coming to the consequent encroachment of this order block here on the September contract. Not on the June contract, but it came came right up to it if we just use the body of that weekly candle, came to it on the September contract. So sometimes when you get these big moves and we're, we're about to roll over in contracts, uh, go look at the next contract month and it's going to get the next contract delivery. And that's going to give you a, a clearer idea of what those impulse moves are actually doing. And so anyways, I was uh, I made a video recap earlier today and I was like, well, I don't know why the YM or what it was reaching for um, today and that that impulse move that we had here on the on the equities open I was like I don't really know what this is doing sure enough there right there on that September contract we can see that's what it was doing is reaching up to the consequent encroachment of an order block and also retrading into a gap on the September contract not on the June contract but on the September contract so anyways bear that in mind look at um, that's what's causing these inefficiencies basically are, are the contract rollovers and getting getting those different contract delivery months in order and every once in a while, it's going to be useful for you to, uh, if you need to clearly see an inefficiency, go to the go to the next delivery contract, and maybe you'll see a gap there where there's no one on the current, the front month. Uh, maybe they'll be on the next month, basically. So that was my eureka moment. I wanted to share that with y'all, and that's what's causing these higher time frame inefficiencies, basically. So keep keep track of multiple contracts, and uh, I'll talk to you later.